Hi there. So today I wanted to talk to you about how to get started with growing your own worms for your own castings for your own garden. Now there's many ways to make a worm bin, but I want to start out with this one first because this is my absolute favorite. It does not take a lot of work to uh, to start this and it is great for no matter where you live and it doesn't take up a whole lot of space and this is the urban worm bag now mine's a little used I actually have about six of these but the idea of this is to feed it from the top it works like kind of like a um, continuous flow through as the castings um, build, you would unzip the bottom, take your castings out, and then just keep feeding from the top. Um, you can make your own um, stand, which we did. We bought just the bag, but they do have one that comes with the stand. Um, it's just a little bit more. We just decided to make our own. But these bags will hold up to four pounds of worms and uh, ours is doing very nicely we have uh, peat moss in this one um, but you can start it with cardboard shredded paper peat moss coconut core um, the possibilities are endless so um, if I were just starting out and I could afford it this is the this is the absolute way that I would do it. It's the less work, less amount of work that you'll have to do. You don't move it around. You put it where you want it and you leave it. And we're going to go to our next steps. Okay, so our next steps is just taking things that you may have laying around the house that you could actually use. And my very smallest that I have is I like to use these little ravioli microwavable cups because they already have uh, holes drilled in them or in them. And you could just take some paper, um, some, some wet cardboard, and you could just put you a few worms in there to kind of just kind of experiment with it. You could put a little bit of um, peat moss if you have some peat moss, um, or you could add some coconut core. And then you would just add your worms uh, with a little bit of either eggshell or, or just a little bit of sand. You don't need much, maybe an eighth of a teaspoon in something this size. Put your lid on it. And then just ever so often, you'd want to feed it some scraps. Um, give it a little bit of water if you need to. Now, these do not have holes in the bottom. So you would need to make sure that you don't overwater it. But you could drill holes if you wanted to. But these are great for teaching kids, preschoolers, um, and letting them have their own little worm bin for very little money. The second one is just using a um, bait cup. Maybe you went to the bait store, went fishing, and you have one of these laying around. You can do the same thing. Just add your uh, shredded paper, um, peat moss, or coconut core. Um, and then we can go to the next size up, which is just a little Rubbermaid uh, uh, pay, uh, dish that has a lid on, you know, comes with the lid. You could drill you some holes in that and use that also. Then we go to a five gallon little tote. You can get these at Lowe's. Um, what we did is we drilled some holes in the bottom and we drilled holes around the edges. And then same thing, put you some cardboard, shredded cardboard, shredded paper, peat moss, coconut core, uh, shredded uh, leaves, that kind of thing. And then if you wanna get a little bit bigger, we have these mortar trays. You can also get at Lowe's. This is the small one, and this is the large one. Now we also drilled a hole or made a hole in the bottom, put a little screen in it, um, but I will tell you these get really heavy, so we tend to not use these a whole lot anymore. We tend to stick to these. If, you, you, if you're using these, you could actually build you a rack like what we have right here, 
and um, this could hold your worm bins. We started out um, with the little small five gallon bins. I built one uh, rack that only had one row of these trays, started in my laundry room. From there, we moved to the back porch and I had two of them. Um, and then of course we just grew bigger and we just kept adding on um, to those. Um, then you could, you know, find whatever you have laying around. Um, this is a neat little bin that we had when we bought our warehouse. Um, and uh, we like it because it's got the window on it and we can kind of watch the worms as they play around in there. Um, and then uh, you could use old bathtubs, old refrigerators, um, just any type of bin that you have laying around. Some people take these blue um, barrels, cut them in half, uh, and use those. Then you would go on to, you know, doing outside if you wanted to do windrows or um, other types of bags and things like that. But today we're going to stick with those that are doing home gardening inside. Um, we, we have a coconut core here from the Urban Worm Company. Um, it's also available on my website. And you use... Um, I believe it's one gallon of water for this one. I believe that's correct. It actually comes with this neat little bag. Um, you can add the water right into this bag and make it. Um, but I do have a, a, a bucket right here. Sorry guys, I'm trying to do this one handed. I have a bucket right here that I'm going to set it down in. And while that's doing its thing, we're going to um, talk about raising worms. So the one thing that is a big mistake at most home composters is they feed them way too many scraps. You need to start with one pound of scraps to one pound of worms. Um, and you don't need to feed them again until they've eaten every bit of that food. The next thing is you need to make sure when you're feeding those scraps that you add, you, you make a little hole, you add some um, shredded cardboard or shredded paper, then you put your scraps on the top of that. Then add a little bit more of shredded cardboard or paper, and then add either some eggshells, um, uh, uh, crushed up eggshells, or a little bit of sand for grit, um, and then cover it up. Covering it up will keep the fruit flies down. Um, you can freeze your scraps, and uh, but you don't have to. You can blend them, but you don't have to. Um, but just know that most vegetables are high uh, water content, and when they're breaking down, they're gonna uh, they're gonna put off a lot of juice. So that's why you want to put that um, cardboard, that dry cardboard or dried paper in there to absorb any of that extra moisture, so that you don't wind up with a um, a bed that's going sour. And um, you want to start your um, peat moss or coconut core, um, about like a wrung out sponge. Now, for those that are going for producing worms, there's a, there's a little bit more moisture content, but we won't go into that today because this video is for home composting. So you just want that so when you squeeze it, you get a, a just a drip of water. You don't want a lot of water. And um, and you want to keep your, your bed that moist. Um, this is actually doing very nicely here. Um, it's already absorbed quite a bit of this water, giving me some great core here. Um, as you can see, it, it, it expands. And um, you can just easily break that apart. So we're going to continue to let that soak. 
and um, I just wanted to kind of show y'all. Like I said, you could just use some of this core to start your worms. Once you have everything in your uh, bin the way that you want it, you want to let that bin sit for about a week. You could also use manures. A lot of people don't like to use manures in the house because of smells or whatever, but if you're just adding a little bit, normally you don't really have those smells. Um, but you want to give it about a week before you add your worms because you want those microbes to um, start. The microbes is what breaks down the food, um, your scraps, your cardboards, your leaves, your paper, that kind of things, and that's what the worms actually eat. So you want to have a good micro population prior to putting in your worms. The second thing is, is when you um, do put your worms in your worm bin, you want to put them on the very top and let them work their way down into the worm bin or worm bed. Um, that way they, they can find their way in, they can get familiar, um, it just keeps them from getting as stressed. Once you do that, you could add a piece of bubble wrap over the top if you like. That would help hold the moisture in. You could actually put a piece of cardboard over the top and that would um, keep them dark. So when you have the lights on, um, they're still in the dark. Now I will tell you this, there's some controversy over whether to have a lid or not to have a lid on your worm bin. I, I really don't care to have a lid. Um, the lid is going to cause condensation and the worms are going to want to crawl around wherever there's water. So I personally like to have a light on, or like a small night light or a lamp, because the worms do not like light. So it helps keep the worms down in the bed. You don't have them crawling around and you don't have them crawling out of your bin or congregating up around the lid of your bin, finding those little holes and escaping. But that's totally up to you um, in whatever you want to do. Um, that's just my personal favorite. But that's another reason why I really love the Urban Worm Bag because you can zip that bag up, pretty much forget about it. Only when you need to feed or water do you have to worry about your worms? Now, we'll tell you where the two zippers come together. We take and stick a piece of cotton ball in between there because the worms will find this least little hole to crawl, crawl through. And we have found that the cotton ball stops that so we don't have worms crawling out. Um, and basically, guys, that's it. That's all there is to having a home composting uh, bin. And like I said, you can start out as small or as big as you like. But if you have some small children at home, get them started with their own little worm bin made from a, a ravioli cup. A, uh, it is so much fun watching my little grandsons uh, check on their little worm bin and, um, and they know that it's there. So it's just a really, really little neat idea. <clears throat> <clears throat> to, to do with your children or grandchildren. And, um, and then you can start your own worm bin for your castings to grow your garden or to, to put on your house plants. You won't be sorry you started it. And you will help save the earth by keeping all of your food scraps out of our landfills. Thank you for watching. This is Samantha with Mimi's Worms, and until next time.